Okay, we're going to continue designing our rocket, and now we're going to start adding the internal components into this rocket. Uh, right now we just have a nose cone, body tube, and fins, and nose cone, body tube, and fins. Now the internal components uh, will start with the engine mount tube. Now first you have to decide what, where it's going to be attached. You can't attach it to a fin, but you can attach it here to this body tube, and it makes sense. Your inside tube goes inside the body. So highlight that body tube, and then find the button that says Inside Tube. And again, it brings up the database, and we're going to select a BT20 size tube. And let's go and look at the side view. And make this a little bit bigger. Okay, here's our tube in blue, and it's a little bit too long right now. Going to the general tab, I want to change the name of this to engine mount tube. And we want to change the length. I'll just make it three inches. So I'm going to type in three and then hit the tab. Okay, so now our engine mount tube is right there. And we want to make it from the base of the owning part and move it all the way to zero. And actually, I want this to stick out a little bit. So, hey, you know what? You can type in negative numbers. So I'm going to type in a negative point five inches, and that's going to hang out the back a half an inch. Um, see this box here that says this is a motor mount? Well, you need to check that. Um, this will tell Roxham that this tube in the rocket is where the engine is going to go. And right now, it tells us that uh, this motor mount tube can hold an 18 millimeter diameter engine. Um, and we also have a couple of other buttons that popped up. Um, load an engine will allow us to load the engine. And why would we want to do that? Uh, because we want to see where that center of gravity is going to be because we want to design stable rockets. So let's click on load an engine. And I'm just going to choose an S to C6 just for grins for right now and click OK. And so it loaded the engine. And remember, our center of gravity was up here. Now it moved back here, and we are still stable. So that's good. Um, radial position, we don't need to change. Mass override, we don't need to change. Color, we do need to change. Um, so let's make this uh, white tube on the inside. And for the 2D color, uh, I don't know if we've used orange yet. OK. And when we're satisfied, click OK. So now we have our engine mount tube back here. Um, now, right now, there is nothing holding this in. I'm zooming in. Remember how we did that. We right click on it with our mouse. It brings up a context menu, and then we select zoom in. OK, we don't have any centering rings back here holding this tube in. Um, so let's go ahead and add those. So if we click on this engine mount tube, um, we can add centering rings to the inside of it, but actually centering rings should be attached to the outer diameter tube. So that's the tube we'll highlight and we'll click add a new centering ring. And I can select from the database, uh, but right now I'm not going to. I'll just click cancel. And here's our editor screen for centering rings. And See this little checkbox here that says automatically calculate the known values? Um, watch this inside diameter. Right now, our centering ring is right here on this blue line. Let's thicken it up a little bit so you can actually see it a little bit better. OK, so there it is. And when I move the location, just watch this inside diameter value. It hasn't changed yet, but we're getting closer and closer to that uh, engine mount tube, and then as soon as we jump on it, look at that. The inside diameter automatically calculates it for us. Uh, I'm just going to slide it all the way here to the rear end of the tube, and then I'm going to change the reference location to the base of the owning part in case I would change this outside tube and make it longer or anything. Uh, remember, we need to select a material, so I'm going to just scroll down here, and I'm going to select uh, paper as my material. Um, and select color, 2D color, I'll make this uh, white, 3D color I mean, and then 2D color, um, nice green would be fine. So there's our ring, 
and uh, I'm going to change the name of this to call it uh, the aft centering ring because it's aft. And when I'm happy with it, I'll click OK. So there it is right now. Now, I like to do things fast, and so I, I can do a copy and a paste, and I can just copy the centering ring and then uh, edit it and just change the location. So to copy it, I go here to F centering ring, highlight it, and then I go to edit and choose copy, and then uh, go to the body tube and then choose paste. And it did. It copied it and it's exactly right here. It's exactly in the same position as the other one. Um, so now I need to edit one of them and change it to the forward centering ring. And then it's just a matter of changing the location. See, I'm moving the location. And I'm just watching the location. I don't have to be exact, um, but you can be if you want. Okay, so there is our centering ring. So now we have two centering rings. And there they are. Uh, remember in the last video, so we said we could come back to the fin and add the through the wall fin tab. Well, let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to go to the fin. I'm going to edit it by double clicking on it. And I'm going to zoom in because I want to see where my tabs are going to be. So I'm going to go to the through the wall fin tab, click here, and I'm going to say have Roxim calculate the depth for me. And it calculates it at 0 0.12, well, that's this distance here. And now the tab length, um, as you can see, I'm making it that long. And then the tab offset is from the leading edge back. And then I can just slide it back. See what I'm doing with that tab offset? And I can center it right around that, um, and, uh, this, this centering ring here at the back. See how that works? How, how nice and slick that is? All right. And I'm back on the main screen. I'm going to go back to the original design. So you can see our through the wall tabs. And if I go and print this, when it prints out, it will print out that tab on the bottom of the fin. Um, so let's uh, stop here, and in the next video, we'll add the parachute and some of the other internal parts and get ready for a simulation.